Hi guys, uh, I'm here today to talk to you about balancing nuclear equations. Um, but before I do that, let me talk to you about this week's assignment. So it is the week May 11th, and you have until the end of Friday to complete um, three things. Uh, two of them are videos. Um, they Each video is about 15 minutes long at the most, and um, they're very interesting. I'm very excited. Nuclear chemistry is usually very interesting and exciting um, to students. And so each of these 15-minute videos is a segment from the series known as Dark Matters, uh, Twisted But True. And I've shown you some of these videos in class, but not the new ones, okay? So each one is about a nuclear chemistry or a nuclear kind of situation, um, and um, they are linked on um, teams to help you find them, okay? Uh, so watch those videos and you will answer four questions for both videos total. So four questions, two videos, okay? The other part of this week's assignment is a worksheet. It's called Balancing Nuclear Decay Reactions, and there are about 16 or 18 problems on the worksheet. You're going to do the first 12. You're going to balance a few reactions, and I'm going to show you how to do that now. Okay, so um, let's go back and talk about chemical equations and how we balance those because there is some similarity between the two and you're good at balancing chemical equations. All right, so here we have a chemical equation on the screen. You see the formation of methane here, methane gas, the same gas that we use um, in the Bunsen burners in class, okay? Um, and this is a synthesis reaction or combination reaction because carbon and hydrogen will come together to make that one product, methane, all right? Now, what we do when we balance equations is we recognize that there is this law of nature that we can't violate. It's called the law of conservation of matter, and it says that if you start with a certain amount of stuff, you've got to end up with the same amount of stuff. Now, the stuff can change in its nature, right? This solid carbon and this gas, um, hydrogen become a different gas, methane, but it still has all the parts, okay? So what we see on the left when we balance, and by the way, we separate the left from the right where the arrow is because the left is the before reactants and the right is the um, after products, okay? Um, what we see is on the left, we have one carbon atom, and on the right, we have one carbon atom. On the left, we have four hydrogen atoms. Two times two is four. And on the right, we have four hydrogen atoms. So that balancing allows us to, you know, um, show effectively that no matter has been lost or gained. Okay? So a similar concept when we balance nuclear equations. Let's look at some nuclear equations. Now you'll notice in these two equations here that there's a left side, right, reactant side, separated from a right side, a product side, by an arrow same convention. In addition, you will notice that on the right side there is more than one product, okay, and that they are separated by a plus sign, okay. For our nuclear decay reactions, um, when I ask you to create them, you will only put one reactant on the left. Now on the worksheet, sometimes they'll show you two reactants on the left, and that's okay, but if I'm asking you to create an equation from scratch, you only have one reactant. Okay, so on. Um, so let's look at how the balancing works. So we still have to obey this law of nature that says matter is neither created nor destroyed. So we have to remind ourselves what these symbols tell us. We learned this in the fall, that the symbol is the element, U is uranium, right? TH is thorium, for example. And at the top, we have the mass of that particular isotope or atom. It weighs 238 parts. That's the nucleus, right? That's where all your mass is, virtually all your mass, okay? The bottom number, in the symbol tells you the atomic number or the number of protons, which is part of this 238 here, right? Okay? So if we look up 92 on the periodic table, we will see that it is uranium, all right? So what we're going to balance is the top and bottom numbers to the left and right of the arrow, all right? And that's what this says here. In a balanced nuclear equation, left still equals right, but we balance the mass numbers on the left with the mass numbers on the right, and we balance the atomic numbers on the left with the atomic numbers on the right. Sometimes we say the charges, okay? So here we go. Let's look at the first one that we saw. This is alpha decay of uranium-238. Now, why is it alpha decay? Well, in decay, you start with, in decay, let me enunciate, you start with an unstable atom, okay? And so it's going to throw off a particle and energy, and then there will be something left behind when that particle leaves with its energy. And that thing is more stable than the starting the reactant, basically. Okay? So if this is alpha decay, we look and see this is an alpha particle. We learned that last week when we looked at you know, the differences between alpha, beta, and gamma. So it is also known as a helium nucleus. It has four heavy particles in the nucleus. Two of them are protons. So if this piece breaks off of uranium-238, what is left behind? 
Well, whatever's left behind is going to weigh four units less, so it will weigh 234 units, okay? Whatever's left behind will have two less protons, so its atomic number will be 90, okay? So we look on the periodic table and 90 is thorium. So that completes our understanding of the particle that's left behind when uranium undergoes alpha decay. All right, it's like a decomposition reaction. Okay, here's a picture that shows that. Okay, alpha particle flies off into space with its energy. What's left behind? Thorium-234. Okay, let's look at a beta decay. Very similar process. Okay, now I will mention that it looks a little complicated on the right here because there's actually two decays that occur, but only one of them affects the numbers. You'll notice that gamma has zero um, mass and zero charge. Sometimes we write two zeros here. Okay, so this is not going to factor into our balancing part. We don't have to write any, you know, plus or minus here to figure it out. Okay, so we're just going to focus on these three particles. So down here's a little picture of it. All right, so what we have is uranium-234. It has 234 heavy particles, protons and neutrons, in the nucleus. 90 of them are the protons. Okay, all right, and our key tells us pink is protons. Okay, um, so when it undergoes beta decay, the nucleus throws off an electron, which is a mystery unto itself, guys. So an electron comes flying out of the nucleus. All right, and when it does, it takes virtually no mass with it, so we don't subtract any mass from the original. That's why the particle that remains behind still weighs 234 heavy parts, okay? Now let's look at this down here. We said before this was the protons or the charges. So in this case, it's a charge. Negative one, right, over here, is gonna to have to combine with the number of protons in what particle remains behind to equal the protons we started with, or the positive charges, we could say. So what plus negative one gives us 90? Well, 91. 91 minus one, or 91 plus a negative one, equals 90. So when we look on the periodic table, we see that 91 is palladium, okay? So we write it down, and that completes our balanced equation here. Now they do show us gamma decay occurs afterwards, and that's important, okay, a lot of energy is released, that's what that wiggly line shows there, a lot of energy, but it's not a particle. So the palladium-234 is still palladium-234, it just has less energy in the nucleus, okay? All right, so here is a um, example of how to do it mathematically, all right, more visually that way. So let's look at polonium-210, it undergoes beta decay here. Okay, so here's the arrow or the equal sign, so to speak, that separates left from right. So 210 heavy particles on the left have to equal 4 plus an unknown A number of heavy particles on the right. So 210 equals A plus 4. To get A by itself, we subtract 4 from both sides. And now that A is by itself, we see that it equals 206, and that is the number we drop here where A was. Okay. On the bottom, we see 84 have, um, uh, protons, or positive charges, equals 2 from the alpha particle plus whatever remains behind. So 2 plus something, z, right, here we go, equals 84 on the left. Subtract 2 from the left and the right, and we find that z equals 82. That's the number we drop here for the atomic number, or the protons, or 82 positive charges, we could say. What is the, the element? Well, the periodic table will tell us the atomic number, the bottom number, 82, says that is lead. So we drop in PB instead of the X symbol, and now we have a completed balanced nuclear equation. PB, 206 at the top, 82 at the bottom, plus the alpha particle came from the polonium-210 on the left. Okay? Right? So that's balancing nuclear equations, guys. You have yourselves a worksheet to do, and so I'll pull it up real quick so you can see what it looks like, if I can find that sucker. There it is. Okay. <laughs> so this is the worksheet that is online on Teams under Files, and at the beginning they explain to you fusion and fission. You don't have to do any of the fusion and fission on this worksheet, but you can read it. And then they talk about the decay, which is what we're interested in, the alpha, beta, and gamma. You'll notice that the table includes information about beta capture, which is interesting, but not necessary for you to do. Okay. And then you will do problems 1 through 12 here. Okay. The answers are at the bottom, guys. All right, and so um, I will show you how to do the first one together, okay? So let's look at it. So here's the left of our equation. It's our reactant. Here's the arrow, and afterwards will be what's left behind, one of the products, and the beta particle. This is beta decay, so you'll write beta over here. That's a beta particle, 
Okay. Now, how do we figure out what the particle contains? It's that AXZ, three pieces that we need to fill in. So the top thing, the mass, is going to be determined from this mass, the starting mass of three, and the knowledge that the beta particle takes no mass away from it. So if no mass is lost, the new particle must weigh three um, atomic mass units as well. Okay, so that number will go in the top. If we look at the bottom here, uh, it has one proton or one positive charge, and then the beta particle uh, leaves with a negative charge. So the negative one here has to add to something here to give us positive one here. So what plus negative one gives us one? Two. Okay, think about it. Two plus negative one or two minus one is one. And when we look it up on the periodic table, the thing that has a two as a um, atomic number is helium. So here's the answer, guys. I'm going to take you down to the bottom so you can see what the balanced equation looks like when you're done. It's moving very slowly. There you go. Okay, so number one is shown right here. What we just said, it's beta decay because this is a beta particle. And if you look here, the hydrogen three breaks down into helium three and the beta particle, let's look at the math, three uh, is the mass of helium plus zero, the mass of the particle that left, equals the three atomic mass units we started with. Two positive protons here plus negative one gives us a positive one just like we have here. So there is our balanced equation. All right, beta is a little trickier than alpha because of that negative one, but um, I don't think you'll have any problems, guys, okay? Uh, oh, you can skip number seven, by the way. Um, on teams, I said do one through six and then eight through 12 because that's a little tricky. That's a fission problem, and I said you don't have to do fission or fusion. All right, cuties? All right, let me know if you have questions. Join me this week if you need some help, all right, during our live sessions. Look forward to seeing you guys. Keep up the good work.